Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, for years, Republicans have bashed Obamacare, insisting it was unaffordable and slowing job growth. And with the inauguration this week of Donald J. Trump and a Congress fully in Republican control, nothing stands in the way of repealing that bill. But then what? Today, our focus is on health care. We begin by examining some of the factors impacting the cost and delivery of health care in Oklahoma. We take a closer look at a new model called ECHO that could plug underserved areas in Oklahoma to better health care outcomes. We're so excited about this new project. It's been going on since 2003, but we'll be the first hub site in the state of Oklahoma to be able to provide specialty care actually into the rural areas. Our Blaine Singletary shows us why a growing number of FFA members are trading in their blue jackets for a white lab coat later in life. We want to have medicine embraced in rural communities, and there's nothing more rural than FFA. You get to experience it and you get to know, yes, this is what I want to do, or maybe this isn't what I want to do, but today I've, I know that this is what I want to do. And Austin Moore takes us to an Oklahoma Tech Center to see how students there are starting off their medical studies while still in high school. Most of the other people coming into those intro-level college classes have not had the opportunities that I have had to work in these labs and to work at this level of education because we are working in a college-level class in high school and I get to know that I can handle that work before I get there so that gives me the confidence to do it and also the tools to know that I can do exactly what that's asked of me. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by CareerTech, a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, as a nation, healthcare spending is more than 10 times what it was back in the 1980s. And chances are, you don't feel 10 times better. In fact, what you may be feeling is that financial squeeze of healthcare costs. We like to believe our medical care is the finest in the world, and that is now debatable. But what isn't is that U.S. healthcare is the most expensive in the world. Americans spent over $3.3 trillion in health care in 2016, which works out to over $10,000 a person for every man, woman, and child in the United States. Now, rising costs are blamed on many factors, more chronic disease, an aging population, expensive new technology and treatments, and prescription drug inflation. But money doesn't always buy results. No other advanced country even comes close to the United States on annual spending on health care. But plenty of those other countries see much better outcomes in their citizens' actual overall health. And nowhere is that more evident than in rural communities. With more, here's our Keila Kellen. Medical students wanting to practice in rural Oklahoma are in the minority. Mercedes Bernard is in that minority and wants to provide health care to smaller communities. I'm from Granite, Oklahoma. The population is a little over 1,500. Um, I graduated with 22 in my high school, and I'm in love with rural Oklahoma. I never thought in a million years that I'd want to go back, and then you get to Tulsa, and it's big city living, and it's not for me. It turns out I miss the country, country girl at heart. <laughs> Currently, Oklahoma ranks 43rd in the nation for meeting residents' medical needs, in part because of the shortage of rural physicians. Compared to other parts of the United States, we have less primary care physicians than most states. Casey Shrum is the dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine and says the school is focusing on producing more rural physicians. Our mission is for rural and underserved areas of the state. So that's a big concern for us. And when you look at Oklahoma, it's even more so that in the rural areas of the state, our physicians are older also. So not only do we have less physicians than most states, but we have an aging physician population in rural Oklahoma. 
Approximately 20 percent of Oklahomans live in rural areas, but only 9 percent of state doctors practice there. We know we're not likely to train someone who's grown up in a, you know, an urban community and expect them to go out and be comfortable practicing in rural Oklahoma. So that's really been our approach. It's somewhat different than the approach that we've taken to recruiting medical students in the past, but I think it's a critical piece for us to be successful and for us to help meet the needs of Oklahoma and our mission. Targeting students like Mercedes and Kevin with a rural background. I feel like when you're in a small community, everybody, you know, it's like it becomes an extended family to you. Like everybody in your community is extended family. And so I think that that's kind of why I'm drawn to like returning back home. Um, they had such an influential part in, you know, my, you know, me getting into medical school and um, just, you know, providing a lot of support and a lot of encouragement. And so it's like, I kind of feel like I want to return back to my family and, you know, um, give back a little bit. Check the periphery. Growing up in a small town, Kevin Johnson wants to return home where he can make a difference. I graduated with 13 people in my senior class. And one of the reasons I like rural medicine is, A, there's a need. There are no physicians in Johnston County. And seeing my family, you know, growing up with limited access to health, insur uh, health insurance and health coverage, there's such a need that I feel like I'm drawn to that area. It's comfortable, it's familiar. I feel like I could really you know, make an impact with my family and friends. But he knows it won't be easy working in an underserved area. It's challenging because you are the go-to person. You could be the only doctor within miles. So you have to keep track of your education and you know, keep, well, keep up your skills in all areas and you never know what's gonna come through the door. So to me, that's very exciting and challenging. Blow it out. But it takes more than just desire to improve rural health care outcomes. When we return, we look at a new program called ECHO. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Project ECHO has been called a performance optimizer. Think of it as a high-speed internet connection for the health care system spreading new medical knowledge from university medical centers to the front lines of community care. But rather than information flowing just outward in one direction, these community providers learn from not just the specialists at the university, but also from each other. Using the latest video technology, community providers are guided in the care by specialists back at the medical school, acquiring new skills that allow them to treat patients that they otherwise would have referred out. It's a treatment model that was developed in the wide open spaces of New Mexico by this man. I'm a specialist in liver disease. I used to run a dedicated hepatitis C treatment clinic in the university. Some patients would travel 200, 250 miles each way to Albuquerque to see me. Yeah, he's getting his diuretic therapy, he's getting the... I found it extraordinarily frustrating that some of these rural patients would come to me at too late a stage, I always had that nagging thought that if I had just been able to treat them earlier, I would have been able to prevent this problem. If you're in a remote area, the specialists that I need and that Ashley needs, we don't have those specialists. We'd be traveling once a month out of town quite a ways. Go ahead, Angela. Thank you, Dr. Banker. Um, patient L.O. is a 39-year-old patient. Um, Over the last 20 years, I recognize what are we going to do with this massive number of people that have to be seen by us. And uh, fortunately, through the ECHO program, I can finally access these people. So why don't you just hold the hydrochlorothiazide. Okay. Let's stay on everything. For a local ophthalmologist started sending me a whole bunch of patients with possible Sjogren's syndrome. And I'm sitting there on the computer going, okay, I know what Sjogren's is, but how do you work it up and what do you do? And it just sort of started from there. But I did do a full autoimmune workup on her, um, which was all negative, including... During the sessions, I'm able to make suggestions and ask questions or clarifications, even if it's not my own case. It's a 
giant mind center of collaboration. And since its development, the healthcare outcomes at the remote sites have been equal to those at the university hospital. That's why the ECHO model is now being implemented by OSU Center for Health Sciences here in Oklahoma. Earlier, I sat down with one of the health center's top docs here in studio. Well, joining me now is Joe Johnson with the OSU Center for Health Sciences. So OSU really does focus on our rural areas. Oh, most definitely. Uh, about 70% of our medical students actually, uh, when they finish up their career, go back into those hometowns that they originally came from. Uh, Dr. Shrum was very innovative in starting with the blue coat to white coat, taking kids from the uh, farm associations and actually putting them through college with OSU and then putting them through the medical school there at OSU. Mm -hmm. And Project ECHO will help rural health in which ways? Oh, we're so excited about this new project. It's been going on since 2003, but we'll be the first hub site in the state of Oklahoma to be able to provide specialty care actually into the rural areas. What we find is that it's so difficult for uh, people in the rural areas to get the same specialty care that they can get in the inner cities, such as Tulsa or Oklahoma City. And through this new method, we will be able to train those local doctors in how to take care of their patients in state-of-the-art technologies for their hometowns. What are some of those specialties that you'll be focusing on? Well, what we've done is a needs analysis through the state, and we see uh, five major areas that uh, are needed. Uh, mental health disorders is, is so critical. We still have a high suicide rate in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, we fare fairly poorly in obesity. Over a third of our population is now considered to be obese with all the disease processes associated with that, such as diabetes, hypertension, coronary vascular disease. So those are two main areas. Then addiction medicine, which will get into our correctional facilities also, trying to prevent uh, people from going back into the prison system. Uh, we're going to also be dealing with viral disorders such as HIV and hepatitis C. And then the last area is uh, dealing with our youngest population, our, our newborns and that by uh, getting to have healthy mothers, uh, dealing with high-risk pregnancies and things associated with uh, pregnancy-related care in the rural areas. Yeah, well, let's get into the specifics. Exactly how will this video conferencing work? Oh, it's kind of a neat uh, way of doing things. So education should be free, and sometimes it's difficult for rural doctors to be able to stay as current as the academic facilities. So through a greet and each over a lunch hour, uh, doctors can join in through video conferencing and they can actually present patients uh, to our panel of team of specialty doctors uh, to where they can give them recommendations on how to take care of and treat their patients. The doctor-patient relationship stays in the community, the healthcare stays in the community, but they get to learn new innovative ideas of how to take care of their patients. All right, well certainly it's an exciting program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dr. Joe Johnson is with the OSU Center for Health Sciences. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, getting a head start in a medical career. But first, from a blue coat to a white coat. Well, the shortage of physicians and other medical personnel in rural areas is a real problem. But one solution is to expose rural students to these careers early on in life. It's been known that young adults who grow up in rural communities are more likely to stay there when they begin their professional lives. Our Blaine Singletary, as a story. If you're looking for hardworking students who have embraced the rural lifestyle, look no further than the FFA. I work with him every evening and walk him and teach him to brace and that's gonna pay off in the show ring. That's Bailey Diffie, just one of thousands of Oklahoma's future Farmers of America. Aside from this passion of caring for livestock and entering them in shows, she also has a passion in caring for people. I've always wanted to be in the medical field, but I never knew what I wanted to do. And then talking to Dr. Shrum helped me out a lot. When we spoke to Diffie back in 2013, she was one of a handful of FFA members recruited by Dr. Casey Shrum and others, and put on the fast track to a rural I mean, medical career. It's all part of a program called Blue Coat to White Coat. When we started that program, I, I think you know, people on both sides of the fence kind of are scratching their heads and kind of curious about why would a medical school be at the state FFA convention. That was very intentional because we, we want to have medicine embraced 
in rural communities. And there's nothing more rural than FFA. It's the hope of this program that these rurally raised young adults will be the perfect prescription for a rural Oklahoma that needs more medical professionals. You know, there are four things that will predict where a physician will practice and it's where they grew up, where they do their undergraduate work, if their medical school has an emphasis on primary care rural populations, um, and where you do your residency training. We're really wanting to focus on getting physicians who are going to be there and become a part of the community and really have an impact on those communities. And it's not just the rural roots that have medical schools targeting FFA students and their colleagues. But they also have a lot of leadership skills. Um, they understand hard work. They understand taking care of something. I mean, they have a lot of qualities that we're looking for in physicians. Programs like Blue Coat to White Coat create pathways for these young adults especially those who would not have thought about becoming a physician otherwise, if they didn't come from a family of doctors or even college graduates. If they don't have someone who can advise them about college, we want to make that easy for them. And that's where Operation Orange comes in. Every summer, the OSU Center for Health Sciences travels across the state, partnering with other colleges and high schools to bring a dose of medical school to these students who might have an interest in it. That's done through pairing high school students with current medical students, like Jessica Sorrell and Cyrus Olivier. We are all second year medical students and we are here just kind of exposing high school students to what opportunities they have in the health field. I worked with the SAM mannequins, which basically simulate um, heart, lung, and abdominal sounds. So it's just a way we can practice. So we're showing them some of the skills we learn as medical students and just hopefully, hopefully sparking some interest for them. It's not just about giving these high school students hands-on experience. They're advising them how to navigate the sometimes difficult road ahead should they choose to go in this direction. Sarah Bollinger was one of the dozens of high school students who came with this curiosity. I think this is really important because there's like, you know, you never know if you want to do it until you see it. So you get to experience it and you get to know, yes, this is what I want to do, or maybe this isn't what I want to do, but today I've, I know that this is what I want to do. It's these unique experiences that Jessica was thankful for when she was in their shoes. I remember in undergrad, not so much in high school, but undergrad doing things like suture clinics and stuff through OSU that really um, made OSU stand out in my mind and also kind of um, reaffirmed that I wanted to go into the medical field or the health field at least. And it's this spark through programs like Operation Orange and Blue Coat to White Coat that could shock life back into rural health care in Oklahoma. Our mission at OSU is to uh, provide doctors to underserved Oklahoma and so I think starting Starting kids young, letting them know that they can do it is really important, especially to like show them ways that they can go back and serve their communities, it's letting them know that this is one way that they can do that. No issue Health Sciences is gearing up for another handful of summer sessions for Operation Orange. To find out how you or your high school student can get involved, we have a link to their website at okhorizon.com. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Well, science education is often about training young brains to think independently and inquisitively. Still, at some point, the hands have to get involved and gain experience with scientific equipment. But for students in small school districts or even in big districts with small budgets, gaining that hands-on experience is a challenge. Our Austin Moore shows us how a technology center in southern Oklahoma is offering small town students a big time opportunity. Teachers like to brag on their students and Susie Edens is no exception. They are curious, they are those inquisitive students, they, they want to work with their hands, uh, they ask why a lot and that curiosity is really the core of being a great science student. Edens teaches environmental science and biotechnology at Potatoc Technology Center. We teach a combination of skills and higher level content knowledge too. So we train them in laboratory skills so that they are going to be able to go directly into college and have skills with the 
high level equipment that most high school students are not going to have an opportunity to use. And an opportunity to delve deeper into science. We are looking at the molecular, the internal structure and processes that go, in, that go on inside every cell. And so these students are not just using a microscope, but we're actually pulling out some of the materials, the DNA, the proteins, and examining those internal uh, substances and then manipulating those substances and transferring them from one organism into another. That kind of embraces all realms of uh, science. So if a student wants to become a veterinarian, if they want to go into environmental science, if they want to become, uh, go into the health field in any way, um, if they're interested in research and even teaching, uh, this is a great place for them. Kay Gamble teaches second year students in this program. We're trying to attract students who are college bound. This is a college prep program. It is only for high school students. We do AP environmental science and as well as AP biology. So they can actually acquire uh, up to about six or eight uh, college credit hours if they pass those two tests. But if we're honest, it's the toys that really draw the students in. Anytime she shows us a new piece of equipment, I just light up like a kid in a candy store. Hannah Kaiser is a first year student in the program. She sees this class as both great fun and as a competitive advantage. Most of the other people coming into those intro level college classes have not had the opportunities that I have had to work in these labs and to work at this level of education because we are working in a college level class in high school and I get to know that I can handle that work before I get there so that gives me the confidence to do it and also the tools to know that I can do exactly what that's asked of me. It is a whole lot of lab experience that you don't get to do at a lot of high schools, especially little old Latta. Laramie Reed is a senior at Latta High School, which is highly regarded, but only has a few hundred students, making a lab like this impractical. But Pontotoc Technology Center is a partner to nine area schools, including LATA, making for broader opportunity and more attainable dreams. Uh, I want to go into biomed engineering and then eventually into rehabilitation engineering, which is like prosthetics and stuff. Spring semester, they can sign up for uh, a sophomore level research opportunity at East Central University. And there they are mentored individually by a professor and they do a research project. I think it's exciting for students from Pontotoc Technology Center that they can go into a college class and already have the competencies and understanding that most of the students are just getting into as they get, get into college. A benefit ECU student and Pontotoc alumnus Lauren Williamson can attest to. I furthered my education in science, biology, environmental science, and learned a lot of lab techniques that I had no clue about, which have helped me in the nursing program with all my biology labs and things like that. The classes here are a lot harder, and with the AP classes we took at the Technology Center, it's just a breeze. Like It's like, oh, I already know this, and so I'm just blowing right through everything. Definitely took a lot of stress off because I was worried at first, and then I got my lab manual, and I was like, oh, well, I've already done all this stuff. Like, I thought this was gonna be a lot harder, but it's not. And then write, this will be for your LB broth, and then you can, then you can enter your data into the Excel spreadsheet in just a, a minute or two. Science is something that is interactive, it's creative, it is a problem-solving process, and, and really it's a way of thinking. Thinking focused on humanity's shared problems. We know about all the organs of a frog. We know the anatomy of humans. We don't know all the inner workings of our cells and, and what makes them tick and what the, the functions that they perform. And solutions grown here in Oklahoma. There's always more to learn. There's always an underlying part of it. You learn about cells, underneath that you can learn about the molecular structure. There's always a definitive answer and if there's not you get to look for it and I think that that's really exciting.
Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Go West, young man, is a phrase often credited to the American author and newspaper editor Horace Greeley, urging America's expansion westward. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we'll meet the newest generation of trailblazers. He just says, hey Richard, would you like to go to Sierra Leone? I didn't even know where Sierra Leone was. It just kind of one thing led to another and then I found myself on an airplane on our way to Sierra Leone. Finding opportunity in a global economy on Oklahoma Horizon. Well, thanks for including us as part of your day. I'm Rob McLennan. Hope to see you back here next week.